Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, for all y'all that don't know, Alex is a uh, multinational, <laughs> multiracial. Uh, he's a man of different flavors. He's like Baskin <laughs> Robbins. You know, he got a little bit of everything out there. Um, but yeah. so, Alex, um, we had uh, you had some new um, new additions, new additions to the U.S. with your family. Uh, family you just had family move here from. Venezuela, correct? Colombia. Colombia, yeah. Oh, Colombia. See? But see, they, those are different well, flavors out they, there, y'all. They did live in Venezuela, but then they moved to Colombia. Okay. And then, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, so cool. So, yeah, so he, you know, like I said, different flavors, Colombia, Venezuela. He probably know, he probably know Chapo and all of them. Uh, but we go, <laughs> that's another video. That's another video. Mexico. Um, <laughs> but, um, but today we're going to talk about, you know, different lifestyles. I mean, your family's only been here for a couple of days now, but I want to get into the ideal of yeah, want to get into the ideal of the uh, different lifestyles. So you know, what what did they see? How was it life? You know, over in Colombia, and what are they seeing so far? That they've been here in America. Is, is it adjustments they happen to make and things of that nature? So that being said, let's dive right into it. So first, give us a quick backstory. All the family members, you don't, you don't have to say who they are or whatever. Just backstory, where they came from, what was life like over there in Colombia, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so this is my father-in-law and my mother-in-law. Now, for my wife, it's her stepmother and father. Um, so they, her stepmother is a citizen of Colombia, born in Colombia. Um, her father is Venezuelan, born, lived in Venezuela. Um, he, when he met his wife, they moved to Venezuela. They lived in Venezuela. As things progressively got worse in Venezuela, they moved back to, or they moved to Colombia. She moved back. He came, you know, he went with her. Now, Colombia is, um, in better economic, in a better economic state than Venezuela, but it's still not anything compared to the u.s they were used to living in a smaller apartment um over there they use square meters but you know say like a 45 square meter apartment is like about 550 square feet here something like that and um you know it'd be like a two bed two bath apartment um the rent over there might blow some people's minds, but like say a two bed, two bath apartment over there is about one hundred thirty dollars a month. Um, one funny thing. Thirty U.S. Yeah, one hundred thirty. Thirty U.S. Yeah, one hundred thirty U.S. dollars. So every everything I'll I'll be talking about in U.S. dollars, I'll I'll do the conversion. But um, one funny thing, you know, they so they've been here a few days and they're like having sticker shock, you know, like they went to Wawa and got like some snacks and like drinks. My wife was like, yeah, it was only $20. Her mom was like, like, you know, like what? <laughs> you know, because then you convert it to her for like pesos, like Colombian pesos. She's like, what? Like, that's outrageous. Like, and uh, she was telling me, uh, she's like, yeah, in Colombia, the water bill is getting expensive. Because she was over there, like, turning the faucet, like, halfway. And, you know, my wife is like, Psh! like, turning the whole thing on, like, full blast. And she's like, you guys run the water like that? And my wife is like, yeah, why? And she's like, no, in Colombia, we can't do that. It's like, it's just shooting through the roof. Like the prices are getting so expensive. And I asked her, I'm like, how much uh, is it costing you? Like the water bill. So she tells me in pesos and I already like am familiar with like how much it is per dollar. So I do the conversion. And I'm like, like, oh my gosh, it's only $30 for their water bill. Like, so she asked how much and I was like, how much are you paying for your light bill? And it came out to like twenty three dollars. So we're paying about fifty three dollars for light and water per month. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like, how much do you guys pay? And I told her like between two hundred and two hundred fifty dollars. And she like she was like and then I told her in like pesos and she was like because in pesos, it's like half of someone's salary, two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars or a household salary. And uh, so that was like insane to her. Like she thought she was like bankrupting us with that. I'm like, no, that's just how it is here. And um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of differences that 
they're seeing even just living conditions are different. Um, I think mm. here in the U.S. we take for granted that we got paved roads. That's a big one over there that they don't have, you know, dirt roads, right. roads and stuff. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of differences. It's funny to see. Um, it's interesting, and uh, interesting to talk about the the differences with them. You know what? Even just the houses here, like an like an average house here, is considered a mansion over there to them. It's completely different. And before before the viewers say, oh well, I just need to move to Colombia. I mean, forget. What you hear in the news about, uh, you know, how good, bad, or if this war is going on. You hear the prices that he's saying, and you're thinking like, oh, that's super cheap. But now, Alex, explain to them what is the normal salary in Venezuela, yeah, in exactly. Colombia. What's the normal salary? So the average salary is about $250 a month per person. Right. So so it goes into the scale of the livelihood. If 250 is the average and then 130 is the is the rent. So that's about 50% of your income going towards you know living and then you add in utilities and things like that, then that's about you know 60-70%. Then you have, you know, a couple, you know, a couple percentage points left to if you can afford a car, a car, and then groceries. That's the same thing that's going on in America, or it's probably America's doing worse. But it's the same. It's the same accounts of scale. I mean, you know, you might have some smart ass who's gonna say, "Oh, well, I'll work in the U.S." I mean, I'll work for a company in the U.S. and live remote over there in Colombia. I mean, if they want to be that badass about it. But the truth is, if you live in, if you live in Colombia or live in Venezuela or live anywhere else in the world. And you're still a U.S. citizen. You still have to pay the U.S. taxes on the income that you receive. I mean, yeah, it'd be more. You still make more than what's in Colombia, and then if Colombia want to charge you taxes also on the money. So, what is what does the taxes look like over there in those countries on income? So, on income tax, I'm going to be honest. I'm not too sure. I know property taxes for like residences comes out to about. Uh, I think it was like. Man, it was low. It was like seventy dollars a year. Um, but as far far as like income taxes, I'm honestly not too sure what their income tax. Well, yeah, but seventy dollars a year. But if you think about it, seventy dollars a year, seventy dollars a year on property taxes. On how much does the house cost over there? Just to so say house. about uh, an apartment for about twenty grand, twenty to thirty grand. So yeah, so it's it's about. So 20, 30 grand, 70,000, what's that, half a percent? Yeah, yeah, about I'm half. I'm pulling up a calculator. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it's it's less than that. It's less than a, it's less than a, a percent. I mean, yeah, it's less than a percent. I mean, about a half a percent. So. Yeah, that was one thing that they themselves said wasn't too bad, the property taxes. They all said it was. Correct. Pretty, pretty low yeah so i mean it's just based on somebody who lived there and things like that it's a it's a to scale of where they were living in the income is the same as the scale of somebody here like in florida if you made thirty thousand dollars a year let's just say thirty thousand dollars a year let's say that's the average right in florida thirty thousand dollars a year and then let's just say you said two bedroom yeah so two bedroom, let's just say in the Tampa Tampa area is gonna cost you between four, uh fifteen to eighteen. So we just gonna you know split the difference and say sixteen hundred. So sixteen hundred times twelve is nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand divided by thirty thousand, and we're not even including income taxes in this thirty thousand. That's sixty four percent of your income. It's the same to scale. It's just, it is a different. A different thing so and and for your family it just probably is just larger numbers here but the income is larger also but right. scale wise it's really the same thing but it's i mean I, I get it it's hard for 
them to grasp, especially when they coming from a place where when you convert it to U.S. dollars, it's it's not the same thing. But that's the same way we, uh, you know, people look at you know billionaires and millionaires when the billionaire buy you know a hundred million dollar property and everybody just like, oh my god, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money to you because of the income you have. Yeah. But to them, it's just a drop in a bucket from, you know, yeah. the income and the network that they have. So, yeah, no, exactly. No, it's just it's interesting to see. Um, And yeah, I mean, it. And I've seen like people make comments because um, I've seen some like property listings like on social media of Colombia. People are like, oh, yeah, but I'm sure there's it's in a cartel zone. Like it's it's not like that in Colombia anymore. Uh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. Um, no, I mean, I will say, I mean, it's not perfect either. There are still some criminal issues and stuff like that over there, but it's not like in a combat zone or nothing like that. Um, right. So, yeah, for an American, the lifestyle is cheaper. Um, but, you know, to live, let's say you do move there as an American to a $30,000 apartment. Are you willing to sacrifice your luxuries? Are you willing to sacrifice not driving on paved roads uh the traffic law has been completely different there are not being any lines in the roads you have to merge in between with cars are you going to be accustomed or are you going to be willing to uh walk outside of your apartment and just on the street it's just carbon monoxide and smoke everywhere and you're inhaling that every day um are you okay with that are you okay with all the buildings looking grungy and dingy and you know, for me, I don't care. I know I understand as a tourist, I'm visiting another country. This is how it is. I'm there for the experience. I don't really care, you know, and I could adapt to that. I could live in something like that if I wanted to make that move. But most Americans, I don't think can do that. I don't think an American because I felt comfortable over there. You know, I was I was cool. I was just like, chill. Like, this is cool. It's a new experience. Um, You know, everything is smaller. Uh, the, the the ceilings are like there's we walk in some places. The ceilings are like six foot tall. I mean, like, you oh, know. you thought you were tall, didn't you? You were like, oh, I can almost touch the ceiling. I was like, oh, these are my people. <laughs> like, you know, like <laughs> everyone else, there is no tall people in Colombia. Golly, like maybe one six foot person, but now nah, there's everyone's in five foot range over there. You know, every all the ceilings are low. Uh, one thing I noticed, you know, being over there too, is the bathrooms are very small, very tight um you know I, I i noticed that was like something we take for granted we have space spacious bathrooms you know you could walk around you could stretch and everything in there but uh you know so yeah as an american you have to be willing to make those changes if you move to a country like that you know it's not just going to be like a walk in the park right yeah and and the thing is, is they they say the crazy things and we wrap this up the they say the crazy things of Oh, the cartel might be out there. What about Captain with the Bloods and Crip? I mean, all these other cities. I mean, they, they, people have an illusion that America, everything is done right. I mean, you worried about cartels and, you know, drug, the Pablo Escobar stories of the 80s and stuff like that, the 90s. We got school shootings every damn day, we got mass shootings. All over the country, but it's it's everybody lives in a, a false state, a false state of where they at is better. And then we, you know, we talk about this all the time. Is is you don't know that something's different until you leave that area. So, but people have this false insecurity that oh, where I'm at is the best place. But the same thing is going on. Carbon monoxide is all over the U.S., just like it is. You just can't see it. It's probably bad in Venezuela, but we got carbon monoxide. China got it. China is the, the second largest uh, mega power in the world, superpower in the world. They got it. People walking around with masks on before COVID. <laughs> before COVID, they had masks on. So it's it's just different things, different locations you go to, but it's still at economies of scale. It's still the same as the United States, just the numbers is higher or just the numbers are lower, but the percentage wise, the cost of living and things like that is, if not the same, it's probably worse in the United States. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Just want to shed some light on, you know, maybe some people that 
had questions or thoughts of other countries and you know internationally and all that but with all that being said guys if you got any questions though leave a comment down below uh we'll answer the best we can like the video share subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one